everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of the ACE Report video blog series. We're in our. I'm, I'm your host, Nick Lawrence, and I'm here today with Donna Cuthbert the, uh, from ACE, the Alliance for a Clean Environment. And our topic in this third of eight series that we're doing today is the truth and consequences of radiation exposure from nuclear plant accidents and meltdowns, something that we all probably need to know. Donna, so, so what actually happens? once uh, a large amount of radiation exposure is released into the atmosphere. What can we say about that? It actually covers a large uh, area and it gets everything radioactive. The food, the soil, the vegetation, everything. Mm -hmm. The water and um, people are exposed through the air uh, and water they drink, the food they eat. And what's happened, Nick, is that people are not being told the truth about what happens from the meltdowns we've already had and that actually um, is leading to uh, the NRC failing to evacuate people as far as they need to be evacuated. Mm -hmm. We're really concerned and we think the reason we need to do this uh, video blog to point out some of the um, things that, that are wrong with the radiation exposure not being evacuated far enough from Limerick Nuclear Plant. We're concerned that there will be an accident or meltdown there uh, with large amounts of radiation released and we, our evacuation plan isn't nearly, um, it's only 10 miles, it should be at least 50. Uh, the ingestion pathway zone right. is only 50 miles, it should be 100. And there is no guarantee that we will have immediate notification because we can't we have to depend on Exelon and we can't because well, we they, have a history of those things of not being notified right? uh, even with uh, even with TMI we, people were not notified right away no that, right? it took three days before right, people exactly. were evacuated and at Fukushima it took a uh, I mean they didn't tell the truth about those meltdowns until uh, two months after they happened. So mm -hmm. there's that, and, and the same thing happened to Chernobyl. So there is a history, and we, we want to try to protect people up front. So that's the whole goal of this. And the point is, is that um, in truth, cover-ups, lies, and secrecy mm -hmm. are just set into motion um, by the nuclear industry uh, to try to uh, keep the public um, uh, supporting nuclear mm -hmm. power and trying to prevent the collapse of the nuclear industry and you know what Nick by them deceiving the public about such an important thing and not making upfront plans it's really about I think it's about ethics mm -hmm. it's about human rights and it's about uh, minimizing harms it's though all three of those things well it should be kind of like a wake-up call hopefully our show this particular segment is is a wake-up call for people because you know, I, I think in most cases, uh, none of us really truly knows what happens as a result of a meltdown. We see it in the news, we hear it on radio, and we get some perspective. They give you numbers about things, but they don't have any real, there's no real data there. But I think what we're going to do in this particular segment can give people a, uh, a real sense of what could happen if a, when a meltdown happens. Well, and people who never told the truth, there's a pattern of really unethical deception about this. I mean, they, they spin it in such a way, and, and truthfully, governments have made fatal mistakes by not moving their populations out far enough, soon enough, and people have been unnecessarily poisoned by radiation and die and, and suffer terribly because the government doesn't want to tell the truth for a couple of reasons. They want to avoid liability and cost to the nuclear industry. So, I mean, you know, but in the meantime, the people are exposed and, and the, there's another factor in that when people aren't told the truth they don't take the most precautionary sure, measures they don't really know what to do they right? don't they're not told the truth about what's mm. really going on with the radiation so they don't take precautions to move out and um the thing is what's really infuriating is we have this empirical evidence for the deaths that happened mm -hmm. after these meltdowns and for the illnesses and things that have occurred um related to them and they, all the numbers have been deliberately underestimated by the government and the nuclear industry. But, and they use a lot of different um, tactics like dilution, uh, discounting internal radiation exposure. When they make these estimates, they don't even look at what we breathe in. 
they only look at the kind of radiation you would get from an x-ray right you know the gamma type rays so that's another trick and and then the other thing they do is they ignore diseases other than cancer so when they talk about this they'll <laughs> underestimate cancers drastically right and then what they do is they turn around and ignore all the other health harms which are known to be related to it including heart disease mm -hmm. and and all the other, well, there's just a long list of things so, that so happen. So it makes it look like it's really not that big of a deal, even though people get initially concerned about it. You know, in the news recently, we've had, we have a heightened awareness toward the safety of our children. And one of the things that I was reading is that radiation doesn't necessarily affect adults and children in exactly the same way. Our kids are more vulnerable, aren't they, in that way? Far more vulnerable. And that's been proven through Chernobyl and Fukushima even to date. Mm. So, so we'll talk about that in the next segment. But the truth about and consequence about the meltdown, you talked about the media, and that's part of the problem. There is a worldwide media censorship on this stuff. You notice, it, sometimes even if you hear about it, you'll hear about it one day, boom, and all of a sudden it's over. That's you, it. I mean, it's, the, the blackout is over that. And before you know it, you're hearing all this misleading propaganda from the nuclear industry. And that's really a problem because when you've got this radiation that's contaminating things, when it gets into the ecosystem, it really spreads quickly. And then everything's radioactive. And you know the worst part, Nick, is without immediate notification, people, victims are really vulnerable because you can't, it's invisible. Mm -hmm. You can't see it, you can't taste it, you can't smell it, you can't feel it. That is the real problem. And so um, the other problem is as it moves through the ecosystem up the food chain, it bioaccumulates, bioconcentrates, and biomagnifies. You know how we always talked about the additive cumulative right, and synergistic well it function. does that in the whole food chain and the the biggest evidence of the best one of the, the best examples is just one of those radionuclides in a meltdown if for example would be cesium mm -hmm. well when that gets into your body it bio accumulates and um it, it, in the liver in the kidneys and um, in the small intestines, and in the pancreas, and the spleen. So certain organs are the more heart, susceptible than and others. And the endocrine systems. Yes, as a matter of fact, um, the new radionuclides that are released with meltdowns, there's, there can be over 100 of them from each nuclear meltdown, and they affect all different kinds of uh, parts of the body in various ways. And that's what... People are never told about that, or they would be more careful, and we would have more protective so, plans. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of a sinister effect here, because everybody says you can't prove a cause and effect relationship between the nuclear meltdown and illness or disease in people, but that's actually a little bit of a sinister ploy, because it, we know that radiation affects tissues. We know that there's no, as we've learned in these shows in the past, there's no safe level there, of there's, radiation. There's no safe dose, and I mean, that has been confirmed by the uh, National Academy of Sciences, uh, Physicians for Social Responsibility, and a broad number of uh, independent radiation experts all uh, confirm that. So. Our position about this whole thing is that people in the greater Pottstown region really have to, um, the greater Philadelphia region have to, to be aware uh, of this for us to be able to get a more protective uh, evacuation and emergency plan for there them. Were, right. There were some uh, flawed MIT studies, though, that gave people the idea that we shouldn't be that concerned about things. Is that not true? Oh, that is so true. Uh, NR NRC, well, they, uh, through the Energy Department, MIT got grants. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, the purpose of these grants was to develop social acceptance of nuclear projects. Wow. And so when um, NRC was commissioned, because I don't know if you recall, at Fukushima NRC will, said U.S. citizens have to go 50 miles and then all the plants like us here we said the same thing, gee, Limerick should have 50 miles if it was good enough for Fukushima, we need it here too. Yeah. All of a sudden NRC goes about trying to prove there's no harm from these meltdowns, so we shouldn't, in fact, MR, NRC is trying to use that MIT study to say that um, there's no need for a nuclear evacuation. 
No need to evacuate people. I mean, the whole thing was ridiculous, but the best part is that a lot of these radiation experts, really great people, independent people, really debunked this thing as science fiction. Mm -hmm. some, some even called it malpractice of science. And the, the fact is, um, what they did was they discounted credible human data mm -hmm. from Chernobyl and so forth. And instead, they did a 35-day mouse study. M-O-U-S-E, mouse. M-O-U-S-E, <laughs> a mouse study. Um, and that protocol was debunked in ways you can't believe. We have a, we a website, where th a video of it where people can go. We'll have it on the screen okay. that people can actually see. And the, the fact of the matter is this is a conflict of interest. They're taking uh, $2 million at the MIT from the Department of Energy and... One guy said, this was real, I love this. The one guy said, having the energy department uh, control radiation health research makes as much sense as giving tobacco companies the authority to see if smoking is bad for you. There you go. Same thing. I mean, right. so it was ridiculous and debunked. And, and there's a good thing that people see or speaking up about that. But who knows about it because you won't hear that on TV. Mm -hmm. well, to show you how ridiculous it was, though, this is, this is, after Fukushima, when people in the world were rightly concerned about what was happening, NRC got a th 3,000, told 3,000 nuclear experts from 34 countries, this is what they said, Fukushima did not result in big radiation doses to the general public, and health consequences uh, were very close to nothing with very little to no long-term health effects, which is blatantly ridiculous. More radiation uh, was released from there. It's the worst nuclear uh, disaster ever in well, mankind. What, wasn't the people, Americans, who were living there, weren't they told to go beyond a 50-mile limit? Yes, right? they were. Yes, so they were. they were told to do that stuff, right? So they, they were. must have concerned that there would be uh, a greater they, effect on people, otherwise they could have just stayed in the area. They think. could have stayed in the area. And there are two books written by uh, Joseph Mangano from the Radiation and Public yeah. Health Project. Mm -hmm. If people want to really know the truth about all of this, um, the one is called Mad Science, the Nuclear Power Experiment. This clearly explains um, um, the facts about what happens in nuclear power meltdowns and radiation accidents, and it debunks all mm -hmm. the nuclear industry spin. Well, there's, no, there's no true way to undo the damage that's been done once it's done, You right? can't undo it. Okay. You can't undo I it. I mean, people need to understand that. Okay, well, no. you know, it's not like you, you have a cold, you take a medication, and it's gone. The effects last. Last. They right? last. In right. fact, the radiation can, <laughs> different radionuclides stay in your body different amounts of time. But um, the fact is, you know, jo uh, Joseph Mangano also wrote Radiation, Radioactive Baby Teeth, the Cancer Link. Mm -hmm. If you remember, he had children from our community in that, uh, around Limerick Nuclear Plant, who had some of the highest uh, strontium-90 uh, levels. Uh, and that's just from routine radiation emissions. Now, what happens when you have a meltdown? That's the whole thing. In our website, Nick, um, you would ask about, yes, there is only one way to take care of this. It's time, distance, and shielding. Okay. Get away from it as fast as you can. And there's a lot of information about that in three sections of the ACE website, mm -hmm. uh, downloads for people, detailed information, um, Limerick's routine releases, no safe dose, and reduced risk. Those will help people with some of these issues. It's my understanding there are over 8 million people that live within 50 miles of the nuclear power plant. That is correct. And, and it will be very difficult to, uh, to even evacuate that many people. Mm -hmm. But we have to try and we have to get them out just as quick as we can. It's important that, we, that people start to help us fight for a a better evacuation plan around Limerick Nuclear Plant so that we can at least have a chance to protect ourselves. There are certain things that you can do, that, Nick, uh, that, that we want people to know that, um, first of all, NRC is not protecting us. They're protecting Exelon's profits. Secondly, radiation exposure can be minimized, and we need to tell our elected officials, all of us, call all your elected officials, contact them today. 
tell them to demand more protective emergency planning, including immediate public notification, independent radiation monitoring with electronic radiation alert systems, which we'll talk about in another show. We're going to have to go. Okay. Time is going so fast All right. on this, folks. Uh, go to our website at acereport.org. All of this information is there. You'll be able to watch this series in, in, in total by going to uh, acereport.org. This is Nick Warren. We'll see you in our next segment.